Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and this is going to be our third kind of monthly update although this one is a little bit late uh, and it's the aqua tuning update. Obviously we get some kit in once a month for this time it's been six weeks because we've been waiting for a few things to come out and then we give you a good, o a good overview of them to give you a kind of good a, a rough idea because sometimes with especially water cooling components it can really help you kind of um, visualize and design your rig if you can actually see some of the bits and some of the pictures on the shop can be pretty good but obviously then when you see them and you know someone actually handling them and stuff like that it can make things a lot easier it certainly has for me in the past when I've been doing stuff now we have got quite the selection of stuff to cover today and um, we've got monster radiators 30 millimeter thick radiators so a hell of a kind of uh, range there We've got a couple of CPU blocks, we've got a GPU block, we've got a RAM block, and then we've got quite a selection of fans. But also, uh, obviously the, the videos have worked out to be quite popular, and it's kind of allowed me now to be able to kind of expand the stuff that they kind of ask me what, um, they, they kind of give me a rough idea what they want to do and I get to pick and choose, but at the same time I've now kind of said, can I have some of these please? Because, uh, and I'll talk to you about it in a, in a bit, but I've got some copper fittings here. Now the, the Alpha Cool brand is heavily based around copper accents and a lot of people have been saying to me I don't really like that, I like nickel, I like this and I like that. So I've got a few bits to kind of show you that you can take the copper elements and then turn them into a feature within your rig. Um, it just it not necessarily takes a little bit of imagination but you just need to have that kind of you know, be, 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 uh, don't be afraid to be brave, I think is the word that I, I'm looking for really. So anyway, we're going to have a look at that. I'll show you these fittings as well. I am going to try and use them in an upcoming build, probably kind of a black stealthy kind of build. But anyway, we'll talk about that in a bit. But I'm going to bring you in. There is quite a bit so, to cover. So get comfortable and uh, we'll get the camera in and we'll start having a look. Right then peeps, we shall make a start and there is, like I said, a fair amount to cover. So I'm going to start with the fans. Now I've got quite a few of these, I'm actually using these in one of my test rigs at the moment um, to kind of get a feel for them. But these are the uh, Phobia G-Silent uh, 12 1600 RPM fans. Um, there's not a lot of information on the box with regards to... Um, uh, specs really uh, it's saying noise levels are 26.9 dBA and 62 CFM that's about the, the most I can get you but with aesthetics on these as you can see it's actually it's a 120 millimeter fan but it's a lovely gloss black uh, the only way I can explain these is the the first thing that jumped into my mind when I saw these was Knight Rider because obviously with the black fans generally they're like a satin color or maybe a smoked black. It's not very often you get all black gloss. There's no LEDs in them, although the fittings, there are gaps there should you want to add your own in. in obviously that would be a cabling nightmare, but you could do it. Um, but yeah, all black and gloss. Using them on full speed, you can hear they do make a bit of noise, but it's because they are moving a fair bit of air. If you spin them down, they are quite quiet. Um, and like I said, in a nice stealthy build, I think these would go lovely because not only, like I said, are they black, but if you imagine this with maybe a little bit of uh, white light in the rig or something to catch those blades spinning as they are now, I think that could work really, really nicely. It wouldn't really matter what colour you use because it would get reflected off those blades. Now, three pin header. Braid is actually quite good. You can't see the wires at all. Um, decent length cable as well, not stupidly long, um, but a decent length cable. I'd say that's over 30 centimetres long, I'd say that's probably like 35, maybe 40 centimetres of cable there. Nice fan, good looking fan, and obviously like I said, it's uh, nice and understated. We move on, because I've got a couple of other ones, what we've got are uh, Phobia G Silent 14 1100 RPM blue and then we've also got the G Silent 14 1400 RPM black. So we'll have a look at the black first. Now the specs on the black are 58 CFM and they say 29 decibels. Considering that that's saying it's uh, louder, it was louder wasn't it? Louder than the 120 millimeter fan with more decibels. I don't know how they work that out to be honest with you. But 
Same kind of uh, idea with the, the, this fan. Cage and the blades are both gloss black. Apart from on this one, the, uh, the centre of the fan's actually got like a, a raised kind of dome. Same kind of thing with the, fat, with the cable in as well. Um, it's, uh, they've been heat shrinked quite nicely. I wanted to say they've been double heat shrinked, but they haven't. Black fitting on the end, black braid. It's actually black cables as well, so it is actually quite nice that they've gone with, you know, completely all black. I do quite like that. Uh, obviously, 140mm fans, you can get 140 rads now, um, but also a lot of cases are supporting 140mm uh, fans in the rear of the cases. But moving swiftly on, and I actually quite like the colour on this. Um, we'll have a look at some stats quick. 24 decibels and uh, 53 CFM. Apparently. So, take it out. Clear um, cage, completely clear cage. And then we've got a lovely, I can't explain how much I like the, the centre of this. I'm looking for something white to be able to show behind it. So, just to kind of give you an idea, we've just got a plain white box and we put the, the fan on the top. Um, Looking in the camera, it does actually look like it's bleaching the blue out a little bit because of how white the studio lights are. But to my eyes, that is such a lovely sky blue. This is the first time I've seen these fans in the flesh and I have to admit, I'm properly, properly um, impressed. Now it says it's got blue LEDs as well. I would have to say that if I could get these fans with white LEDs, I'd probably like them a lot more because I think the blue LEDs might be a bit overpowering. But without the LEDs on, they look the absolute gonads. I really, really like that. Um, cable, uh, it's uh, white cables, white braid, and then white fitting. So I can see a lot of people maybe liking these with a white and blue themed rig. I do believe they do these in 120 uh, millimeter as well. Um, and I have to say, if I was ever gonna do an OC 3D themed rig, if I could get these fans with white LEDs and this lush, these lush blue blades then I probably these would be end up being the fans I used I would have thought because that's such a nice blue properly properly like those or that I should say so I'll just stick this back in the box right now we're going to move on swiftly 180 millimeter fans obviously uh thanks to the joys of uh Silverstone having so many cases out now with 180 fans and uh, not only in the bottom with the fortress and the ravens uh, but we've also got the um, uh, cases that are popping up with them in the front as well. There's a couple of MATXs that I've done recently that I've had them in the front. Obviously, you can get single 180mm fans for those MATX cases, and you can also get dual and triple 180mm uh, radiators for uh, the Fortress and the Ravens. So it's nice that we've got um, options out there for replacement fans as well. Now, this one is a 700 RPM slim, so it's slightly thinner, but we'll have a look. Uh, red LED and this one is a uh, blue LED and I'm just gonna have a look at the stats um, Yeah, they are both 18 decibels for the um, noise level and 60 CFM for the, uh, the Amount of air they shift So we'll have a look And just to give you a rough idea because it says they're thinner Mind you, they're 25 mil thick, maybe a couple of millimeters thinner, but nothing, you know, what I would call, I wouldn't call that a thin fan at all. I'd say that's a standard 25 mil thick fan there. So anyway, back to the coloring. Again, we've got this um, lovely, well, the blue that I really liked, but on these, the back of the blades, it's got like a textured surface. So when you look from the other side, it kind of looks frosted. Have a look. It does actually give it quite a nice effect, especially when you're looking at it that way. So you're looking at it as it's blowing the air away from you. I do quite like that. Again, clear blade, uh, clear cage. Um, the cables on this are not quite as good. It's got a massive bit of heat shrink on the top, uh, and the you can see the colours. Of the cables through with the other one the cables that were inside the braid were white uh, so you couldn't see it now these you can see that we've got colored cabling through there so it doesn't look as nice cable wise 
Really depends how picky you want to be about it though, but that's still a really, really nice blue on there. But we'll look at the red quickly and then this will be the end of the fans. We've spent eight minutes talking about fans. Basically the same fan as before, but we've got red now. It's got the frosted behind, like I said, or the textured surface behind. It's still transparent. But I have to say, when you look at this, when I was looking at it through, at the light, it's almost like, uh, the best way I can explain it is it's like a candy red and the textured makes it have like a sparkle effect. But obviously it's still transparent, so you've not got those speckle flakes, but that's the best way I can explain it. And like I said, I wish that they'd um, done the lights uh, the, the LEDs white rather than the, the red and the blue respectively because I think that the frames are probably enough um, but that is a really really nice red I think uh, especially with a black backdrop against a radiator or something that will look the gonads and I really do like that I say I really do like that a lot but it's, it's the colours I'm, I'm liking and at the end of the day like I said what I'm trying to do with the, the, these type of things is give you an idea of stuff that you could be using in future projects. Now, next pile of stuffs. Off the top, this is a uh, ram cooler, and it's a, a water-cooled ram cooler. Now, I know a lot of my uh, regular subscribers are going to be going, you don't like ram coolers, and it is one of those things, I don't necessarily like him. Um, but I'll explain why. As far as ram's concerned, they don't really get hot. Um, and when I build my walk-in loops, I like to keep things anally tidy. And by anally tidy, I mean if it doesn't really need to be there, I don't put it there. But a lot of you out there like things to look fuller, and just because you can call your RAM, you want to do it, that's perfectly fine. So for those of you out there that um, want to, we've got a nice alpha call RAM block. And I believe this is aimed at uh, Dominator kits. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, the dominate kits where you can pull the tops off um, and it's all copper with a black Delrin top you can see that we've got the uh, copper um, allen headed bolts in the top nice machine copper surface underneath it's not a mirror finish but it's very very highly polished there's a few kind of machining marks on there but copper is such a soft metal if you wanted to spend a bit of time you could mirror finish that yourself with some teacup in no time um, but quite a nice looking block and it does follow the alpha core theme of the black and the copper which is something you need to keep in mind when we start talking about the fittings in a little while um, because like I said I'm going to show you a way where you can really start turning all these copper parts into a really nice feature for a rig now moving on we've got a couple of CPU coolers um, first we've got uh, the alpha core Nexus CPU cooler first of its kind I believe, I think it's the first one that they've done and then we've also got the Phobia CPU cooler UC1 so what we'll do is we'll have a look at the UC1 first I'll take it out of the box now by that mount I can already see that we're we're talking Intel support I'm looking around I can't see an AMD bracket with it but I'm pretty much I don't even know, they might sell a separate AMD one. This is definitely Intel. This is um, uh, 775 up to uh, 1366. And if I have a look in the pack, yeah, I'm pretty sure, yes, it does support 2011 as well. Just looking at the fittings. So, there's the Phobia block. Now, this is all black. You can see that we've got a really gloss black um, top. There is a copper back but once it's fitted in your system with this black um, mounting plate you're not going to be able to see the copper at all so it'll be quite stealthy in your rig be quite understated as well but I'm going to keep the CPU blocks actually we'll do it with the the alpha core one it's fine um, but it's a, a really nice looking phobia unit now what I am going to be doing is testing the 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 phobia unit and the alpha core unit in the not too distant future. I've got a little bit of testing that we're going to do. Now I'm not trying to kind of encroach on any of the what I would call the professional water cooling testers um, territory because I I'm just going to be doing some quick uh, my style kind of testing. But we'll have a look at the Nexos. 
This one, when we pop it out, same kind of idea with the box. It's got the foam holding the uh, foam holding the block in with the fittings to the side. But differently with this one, there is separate brackets, which is kind of one of the reasons why I mentioned it about the, the bracket with the other one. With this one, we do have a separate AMD bracket, and then we've also got the Intel bracket, which if I pull the block out, basically sits over the top of the, the block. And you go like that, and obviously you can just whiz this off if you want to change it over to AMD. Now again, we've got a black top, but this is a Delrin top this time. It's not as highly polished, it's more of a satin finish. And obviously you can see the nice Alpha Cool uh, detailing. Um, nice copper detailing. There's no visible bolts, uh, and you're not going to be able to see the copper from behind either. Now, just to have a look at the finish, again, this is a better finish than the um, the the RAM block, but there are still some very faint machine scratches, but it's as near as damn it mirrored. I can see myself in it perfectly. You can see the my screens in the background. Come round, camera. Oh look, you can see us filming. But and we go up. There we go. Studio light blindness. But it's very, very highly polished. Just not uh, to a complete mirror. Now I'm going to leave that block out to one side because we'll we'll come back to that in a second. We'll move this. We've got. It comes with all the fittings. It does come with some uh, thermal paste in there and some bolts. But as with most of the stuff. This looks like a generic thermal paste. It's not branded or anything. Um, I normally tend to favour having some other aftermarket kind of paste to hand that you can use. Now, another thing that we've not really seen a lot of from Alpha Cool is uh, water cooling blocks. Now, straight off the bat, we've got uh, some thermal pads in there which you're going to need for fitting, but this is something that I quite like. Because of that copper theme, we've got copper bolts and then also copper stock plugs as well for the ports that you're not using. But the fact that we have copper bolts, so that will show on the back of the unit, is brilliant. Now I have got a back plate, so when you fit those you could have the, the copper bolt showing on the nice black back plate. But let's have a look at the block itself. Now this is quite unusual, it's vac packed and by vac packed I mean it's the type of thing you'd expect to get from your butchers where there's no, it's complete, they've sucked all the air out of it before they fitted it um, and that's obviously to keep the copper back nice and clean. We've got copper back and then the front that I've got on this, I'm trying to look, I'm pretty sure I've got, a, I can't remember whether I've got a copper front that they sent or um, a stainless one series polished copper. I thought it was, but because of the lights, it's kind of difficult sometimes to see. But I'm gonna open the packet, just doing it quickly off camera. And now I can see better, and oh my dear God, how about that for a polished copper finish? And that is copper. This was one of the reasons why I was trying to double check, because it was so shiny in the packet. Look, you can see me. I'm talking. It was so shiny in the packet that I honestly thought it was a nickel or a mirror stainless. The top on that is unreal. I've never seen a copper top look so nice. But one of the things I'm thinking, and it might be very, very clever, is if we have a look. Obviously, it does, it is copper. I'm not jesting. If we have a look on the side, you can see copper, then you can see uh, like an alley or a stainless plate, but it's definitely copper on the top, so I don't know whether this is like an electroplated copper top. Um, it's, it is a, quite a strange one. I think it might be, like I said, like electroplated, so it's not a solid copper top, but there is definitely a, 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 cop, you know, a mirrored copper top. Which it would make a lot of sense, especially for machining and polishing for electroplating, because you're much more likely to get a, a level finish. But that was one of the reasons that that was throwing me the fact there was a silver side on it. But it does, 
it do, you can see it's copper on the top and you can also see on the box as well it says polished mirror copper but i have to say the 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 side bit because obviously you're going to see it on its side like that that side bit considering it's copper i would i wouldn't say it's a letdown but it's it's a bit of it it's going to throw a lot of people um but the, the, the actual finish on this thing is unbelievable. They do do these tops in different uh, ones where you can get a brush top and get a, a nickel top. So there are a few options there for you. But like I said, we've also got, I've already had this out to have a look, a back plate. Which is a nice plain um, uh, back plate. It's got a textured finish, it's not gloss. We've obviously got the alpha cool detailing in it but if you imagine that with the copper allen bolts on the top of your graphics card which obviously you're going to be staring at be a really really nice touch i think i do quite like i do quite like that uh, but what we'll do is we'll uh move this to one side now, i'm going to use the seat the graphics card block Again, just moving stuff out of the way. We'll keep the CPU block to hand as well. Now, like I said, the radiators are obviously black with the copper detailing. There's a lot of copper coming through with the rest of the system. I still can't get over how shiny that thing is. You can see what I mean about the, the copper glint to it, but it's such a nice finish. Anyway, we've obviously got the bits of that, but a lot of people have said to me, what am I meant to do? Just use black fittings? How am I meant to go about, you know, a, a nice kind of way to bring that copper into my system? Well, what I would probably say is use a black coolant so that you've got a nice colour in your res and then look at using these. Now, I've got a selection of these because we are going to be using them uh, again. Um, don't want to say too much, but they are going to be appearing. May not be instantly, but... They will be getting a. They will be getting an airing. Right, try and keep these elastic bands because those things go everywhere. Right, I have a selection of copper barbs. That's another copper barb. Where's the nineties disappeared to? Copper nineties. And where's my forty fives? Have they all got mixed up? I'm sure I had some 45s here as well, but apparently not. Maybe they're still in the cupboard of dreams. I shall have a look. I do apologise. I was positive I had some 45s, but apparently I didn't. So I must have been imagining things. I'm sure I asked for them. Anyway, they do do... 45s as well so I'll bust this open in fact I'm going to bust a couple open because until you see these on something black it's going to be really difficult for a lot of you to be able to kind of get in your head how nice using black and copper together can look now if you imagine you've got some clear hose clear hose is the critical thing here with that so we've got clear hose, so the clear hose goes over. And the reason why we say clear hose is because then, if you think about it, the black coolant goes into the barb and you can still see the copper barb through the hose. And that's really the point, so that you do get to see that, that finish. And uh, if I bosh one of the, the 45s, now, uh, sorry, one of the 90s out, the, uh, the 90s are rotaries, and by rotaries, I mean that when they're fitted onto a block, they're quite tight to do them by hand, but you can basically twist them. And they've also got a rotary on the end to help you uh, unkink your, your hose. But if we use the GPU block for this, spin the rotor rotary on, fling that round. And I'll stick a barb on quickly as well, just so that you can kind of get a better feel for how they can look together. Like I said, I'm just spinning these on quick. But I really, really like that. And like I said, with in a, a stealthy rig, lots of black, 
These copper accents could really make a lovely, lovely system. Um, to the point that, like I said, I was when someone said to me about it, I instantly went into how would I go about it mode. Quick nip over to the Aquatunium website, found these uh, copper barbs that they do, and honestly, they are the gonads to the point where I really, really, I yeah, I like them. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff I like, but you've got to use them in the right ways. I don't think if you had these copper ones and had like green coolant coming out of them they'd look right. I don't think they'd look right with like red coming out of them either. It really does need to have that kind of real stark difference with the black. I think black would work absolutely perfectly with these. Now, we've got a massive pile of stuff on the floor. I'm going to make it even worse because of all the loose fittings and stuff, but I'm going to move this out of the way. We've shown you uh, a nice way of being able to use the copper barbs. We're going to be using these again. I'm going to have a moan at um, Aquatuning because I'm sure I should have had some 45s as well, because I'm going to need 45s for what I've got planned for using them with. But, radiators, dear Lord. Um, the reason why, uh, basically I spoke recently about uh, radiators in the uh, Corsair 600T and I said uh, the, the uh, technology with radiators has moved on quite a bit and that was why I said about the 30mm thicks. Before I wasn't really a fan of 30mm thick radiators. They've, they, they have come on a lot, there's a couple of them out there and one of them is the Nexos ST30s. Now they do these in 360mm, uh, I think they do them in 480 uh, as well and then they do them in the 240s, I'm pretty sure you can get 120s. But the main ones that we're going to be looking at today are the 360 and the 240. Crucial thing is 30 millimeters thick. Uh, now, th there are different thickness radiators out there and that obviously gives you the ability to be able to decide the best thickness to go in your case. Sometimes you're limited with the amount of space that you've got, so you've always got to think that. But always remember, 25 mil fans. And it just, people ask me all the time, will this radiator fit my rig with these fans? You can, I've, if I've told you how much room there is above the motherboard or how much radiator space that you've got, I've answered your question, you just need to kind of get a bit of common noggin and have a bit of a think. Now before we get the radiator out, one thing I do like about the Alpha Cool all copper rads is the amount of stuff that they send you for fitting. Um, because the reason why I like them is they send you the uh, screws which are Allen bolt again. So that's enough there for three fans and they're copper. So obviously you fit your fans and they're going to work really well with the copper accents. but it's one of the few radiator manufacturers out there that send you a second set of screws so that you can do push-pull and you don't have to buy extra screws. And they're all copper as well. Now that needs a big thumbs up because there's a lot of manufacturers out there only send you enough screws for one bank of fans. And it's something that's grated on me for quite some time. But here we go with the radiator. Now, first things first, up at the end with the fittings. Only one way round that you can fit. There's no extra uh, mounts on the top or the you know on both sides as there has been with some of the other radiators. Um, it's a really nice satin finish, as you can see the light glinting down the side of the radiator there. We've obviously got the uh, Alpha Cool copper detailing. Uh, fin count not massively high, but that's what we want. Because we don't want too many fins in there really, because uh, a wider fin count means we, means we can run lower speed fans, that the, the radiators will work with a higher static pressure, high, they prefer a higher static pressure with the fans that you use, but also means that you can keep the fan speed low, uh, and that's the crucial thing. More fins means basically you need to run a higher, FP, uh, a higher RPM. Something else that I really like about these radiators as well, which is something that follows throughout the whole of the range, if we, uh, if I show you there, if you look underneath the radiator there, you can see a step or a stop plate, as I like to call it. And basically, what that means is when you put your your fan screws in, there's a plate there to stop you driving the screw all the way through the radiator and then puncturing the uh, the the water channels in uh, below. A lot of radiators still don't have that out there, so that's a really nice touch. You'd be amazed how many, I, I, there's no only one way to put it really, you'd be amazed how many, many noobs will put the, the fans, you know what I mean, and bang the screws right the way through, over tighten them and end up puncturing these. 
So that kind of gives you that point of stop and lets people know that's enough peeps. Um, you're just about to puncture or snap something. Uh, but like I said, 30 mil thick, there's no um, bleed screw or anything at the end. The end tank actually isn't that big either. But it's a really nice looking radiator. The, the thing that I would like them to do is send the Alpha Cool sticker out separately because if you have that in your rig with the, the barbs the way they are at the moment, facing down, because um, a lot of people, including me, I normally try and get the, my barbs towards the back of the case. Uh, the Alpha Cool logo is going to be upside down. There's only one, and actually, if you have it that way around as well, it's upside down. So if you've got this in the roof of your case, especially with this one, doesn't matter which way around you put it, that way or that way, the Alpha Cool logo is going to be upside down. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a misthought there. The only way you could have it the right way around would be if it was in the bottom of your case. Um, which does seem a bit strange. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a strange one, Alpha Cool. Please, please listen to us. Can we have these sent out separately? Just as a little sticker pack inside. Maybe send two or four of them out because people may want to have one on either end or something. But yeah, please send them out separately so we can put them up the right way. Anyway, so that's the 30 mil um, uh, 360. Now, for a stark contrast, what we're going to do is now bring out the monster. Now, this puppy is 80 millimeters thick. There's still 320 millimeter fans on it, but it's 80 mil thick. Now, we have 30 mil thick rads. Alpha Cool have brought out some 45 mil rads as well, but generally it's uh, 30, and what I would call a double thickness rad or a normal thickness rad, whatever you want to, however you want to call it, is 60 mil thick. So this is a whole 20 millimeters thicker. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is just quickly, I'm gonna grab the 60 mil rad so I can show you a size comparison. Because I've obviously got a few of the Alpha Cool stuff here, which I use for reviews. So, basically what I've done is pulled out the 60 mil rad. So we've got 30 mil. Have to move this out of the way. There we go. Right. So 30 millimeter, 60 millimeter. And now what I'm going to do is get the daddy out. Now a lot of you will be familiar with how thick a 60 mil rad is. There'll be a lot of you looking inside of your case now and kind of having a glance at yours. This thing is ridiculous. It's huge. Now one thing I will say is straight off the bat, the finish on this is a matte black. You can see it's hardly catching the light. It's really showing off the Alpha Cool logo though, which is quite nice, but it's matte black. The radiator on the others, the finish on the others is satin. There we go, you can see the difference. Massive, massive difference. So the finish on the radiators doesn't match. Um, that's not really going to cause too many people of a problem, but it's worth noting. Also, I've heard this recently on our forum. Someone said to me that, that my radiator is rusty, but when you have a look at the fins, it's actually a really, really light coating. They've not really painted the fins. And normally, it's, we know with this, it's going to be copper because the, the, this radiator is all copper. Um, and that's what you can generally see is the copper underneath. Um, there really is it's a really, really light coating on these blades, which is obviously good because it, it means the heat dissipation is going to be better. At the end tank end, we've got fittings that side, on the end, and round the back. So you can choose which way round you can have it. So basically that means you can have your Alpha Cool uh, badge up the right way if you want. There's also uh, a fitting at the end, which uh, you can use as a bleed screw. Something I've seen people doing uh, quite wisely recently, uh, it was something I saw and I was like, that's a really clever idea. Somebody actually wired a fill port up to this. The, uh, it was on a, one of the smaller rads, but the, the radiator was in the roof of his case and he wired a fill port off to it. There was a little bit of a divot before it came out. He had a 90 degree fitting and it went up to the fill port. But it basically meant that any air that got tra trapped in the back of this radiator went up the fill port instead. And obviously when he filled his unit up, he could do it that way. 
I'm not sure how that would end up working with actually getting the coolant into the reservoir, which is where you're really going to be wanting to top it up. But nonetheless, I thought it was a nice, you know, kind of novel idea. If for no other reason, then that fill port, like I said, you could end up using as a bleed screw. Um, but anyway, nice little touch. Not something I'd necessarily recommend, at least until I've tested it anyway. But the idea with these radiators is where they're so massive um, is the fact that uh, they, they say, basically, with the same kind of speed fans, this will perform as well as a 480. Obviously, that's not something that uh, I, I've tested, but it's just the claims that I've seen. Um, it's still designed for low RPM fans as well, but you are going to need a, uh, you know, some bloody good high static pressure fans really to get the best from this. Um, obviously, it's huge, and people instantly out there are going to be thinking push pull and this. You're going to struggle to get this in the roof of many cases, to be honest, peeps. Um, if you've got uh, cases with a lot of drive bays, though, I think these are really going to come into their own with uh, cases that have are stood up. I'll move it back a bit so you can see. So that you can get it stood in the bottom of your case, and uh, obviously, you always want to try and keep the barbs at the top. But where it's uh, then. Uh, it, the thickness doesn't really make a lot of difference then because it's the height that's only going to be your restriction. So even then now you could then end up being able to run a couple of sets of fans uh, on this and like I said it's only really the height that's really going to be making any difference. But again I'll show you, that's your 80mm thick. Then we go on to a 60mm thick and then we go the little baby on the top, 30mm thick just to kind of bring you in so that you can see there is um, quite a difference there but it's really nice I it's nice that, that people are being brave and bringing out some of these extreme products because it gives us options and obviously options is never a bad thing the other thing with this case with this case with the uh, radiators it does come with your set of fans for push pull as well um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this back in I'm not going to uh, bore you by putting it all away I'm going to have so much to do when I finish this video as far as putting parts away because it's the floor's covered uh, and we've obviously got that 60 which needs to go over here now We've also got exactly the same as we've had before with the 30 and the, uh, the Monster, but we've got them in 240mm sizes. And I'll, I'll just show you these quick, because obviously we've seen uh, the... Um, we've seen the, the, the bigger brothers. Uh, now, I've not got a 60mm uh, all copper to be able to show you. I've got some 60mm uh, radiators from other brands. But I'll just show you these two. Now, the 240 uh, 80mm thick was something I did want to kind of mention to people because um, I think this could end up being a radiator that a lot of you end up choosing to go in the bottom of your NZXT switches. Um, or even in the front. If you went in the front, you'd have no problems running push-pull either. The only times that you with an NZXT um, switch you'd run problems uh, if you wanted to run uh, this in the bottom of your case, especially if you wanted to run push forward. If you have graphics cards coming right the way down your, uh, your motherboard, if you don't have a, a graphics card right in the very smack bang of your motherboard, you'll probably be fine anyway. Um, but obviously a massive, massive 240mm radiator. It's just, it, especially where this one's so shorter, it, it, it kind of does feel bigger. If that makes any sense but we've got the end tanks we've obviously got uh, fittings on the both sides and the top which is great we've got the uh, the bleed screw around the back as well obviously because we can have it mounted whatever way we want it doesn't really matter about the the alpha cool logo we can just spin it round um, the only thing really that becomes a problem uh, with the alpha cool logo is if you want to have your case if you want to have your radiator a certain way round they're both the wrong way up. They've uh, they've put them on the same way. It'd be nice if they had one one way and one the other way. It'd make a lot more sense then, because then if you had it round that way, but you wanted your radiator around, yeah, 
it, it makes sense in my head anyway. But again, still, it would be great if they could just send us these ruddy stickers separately so that we can do what we want with them. Uh, again, I don't know whether the camera's going to pick it up because it's quite a fine thing to try and catch. You can see the copper there. There we go. It's not rust, it's copper. And it's just because there's such a light coat of black on the, on the, uh, on the fins, which, like I said, is a, a much better thing. The little baby, 30mm thick. Again, the fittings are only on one side with these. There's none on the ends or on the other side. Might be just a way for you to be able to keep costs down. Tiny little end tank, it's quite a cute thing. Um, but still, as I said before, throughout the whole range with these, there's uh, the, the stock plate so you can't drive your screws through. And I don't know whether this will pick it up where it's so thin, but I'm trying to let you see, you can see the copper on these as well. Now that's not a bad thing unless you're staring right at it and you're gonna be looking at it in your rig a lot. Uh, obviously once you've got the fans on, it's really not gonna be too much of a problem anyway. But we've had, crikey, we've had a lot of radiators for us to look at this time. Um, but it's, it, like I said, it's a real good thing because it gives us plenty of options. One thing I will say though, I can't stress this enough, I'm going to try and do something with it. It's not going to be within the next few weeks. But I am going to be trying to do something with the copper fittings because I, I do really like the, the, the basicness of the copper. And like I said, they'll work really, really nicely. Uh, with a, a, a copper accents in the rig and that really leans yourself to the alpha cool stuff as well um, maybe alpha cool should get me to build them a, uh, a system or something that matte black switch could end up looking lush anyway right so we've got an immense amount of uh, kit in here uh, and I do mean an immense amount as well it's all over the floor so I need to get um, clean up now the stuff that I'm gobsmacked by this time round the monster rads are enormous and lovely. I really like these couple of fittings, but I think the thing that surprised me the most is the finish on that water block. It's still now, I keep looking at it, trying to make sure that it's not nickel. But like I said, it must be an electroplated top. I'm going to have to ask them because it's just that silver side kind of throws me. But it's definitely copper on the top. Lovely bit of machining on there as well. That's honestly, you'd think that there was destined for a show or something. It's lovely. But again, don't forget about these copper fittings because I asked for these specifically just be, because I can show you, you know what I mean, that you can, you would be able to do some real nice stuff with it. And I'm hoping that those of you out there with an imagination are going to be looking at those and going, oh, my matte black switch with those would look the absolute dog's gonads. And you can pretty much go through the whole Alpha Cool range and go copper, 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 bosh. Obviously, the, the rads are all copper as well. Um, but anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you because this video is enormous, considering this is the second part and I'm looking at the clock and it already says 40 minutes. It's going to take me a month to Sundays to get this rendered uh, and probably another couple to get all this stuff put away as well. But for now at least, you've had 40 minutes where you've not even had to look at my face. How lucky have you been? This is Tiny Tom Logan with a cold cup of tea. Out.